I'm joined in studio today by a very special guest, Professor Roger Martin. He's a global thinker, uh, came to prominence really around his work on design thinking, has been Dean of the Rotman School of Management. It's an absolute pleasure to join him in studio. Roger, welcome. Thank you for being here. It's great to be here. We need innovation, particularly in, in changing times. Um, you know, it seems though at the same time that companies are constantly frustrated by their failure to innovate. What's happening? I've come to the belief that it's sort of a, a clash of thinking ideologies that's mm -hmm. gotten us where, we, where we've gotten to. Uh, what I believe has happened is that as the world has gotten more sort of scientific, quantitative, analytical, it has inadvertently driven out innovation. So not purposefully, but, but inadvertently. And, and that's because when, uh, when you think analytically, it means you're, you're powered by data. And if you think about it, all data comes from the past. And so if you try to analyze yourself to a new conclusion, you're not going to find it. But if you think that analysis is critical to making decisions, i.e. I can't make this decision until I can prove analytically that it's the right one, then you're stuck in a bit of a catch-22. Right. You, you, you can't analyze the future, but you need to prove something before doing it. And so you analyze and analyze and keep convincing yourself that something new and different can't be proven, so it's, it's not rigorous to do that. It's, it's not good management uh, to do that. And so I think that's what's trapping companies into small amounts of innovation. The argument would be, I guess that the past doesn't matter, but as has been said, it's not always going to be the best predictor of the future. The question is then, what, what's the alternative? What's your recommendation to organizations? And what I think has happened in the business world is that the business world read the first book that said, here's how to be scientific, and ignored the second book and the warning that said, don't use this method over here. Mm. Uh, and and so I, I think it's that, that thinking trap that, is, that has trapped companies. It's why senior executives, when some new idea comes forward, will say... Prove it. Yeah, we're not going to do that if you can't prove it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're, we're good managers. We, we are data-based. We're fact-based. We do things on the basis of, uh, of analysis here. So just, just, just go back and do the analysis. Mm -hmm. You then, of course, do the analysis about something that hasn't happened yet and can't prove that it, that it will happen. And so you either give up or you come back and get told, listen, I told you to prove it and you yeah. can't. Uh, and so, so that, that, I think, is a, is a huge stumbling block for innovation that is not understood or appreciated because managers are taught uh, and socialized to believe that being scientific is being meritorious. You've implied that there are two really important capabilities then in addressing innovation. Uh, and I don't think we often see them side by side. So the one is imagination yes. and the notion of how, how do we free will, how do we think creatively. I think that's received a lot of attention. But the other point that you've made as well is this notion of the compelling argument. Yes. Now it strikes me that we operate in a, in a business environment and indeed in a global environment, but this need for persistence in addressing these. Won't you speak a little more about that? Sure. Uh, in, in, in order to persist as an organization, you're going to have to both exploit the here and now and explore the, f the future. And that exploration of the future is going to take succeeding in making a compelling argument. And, and making a compelling argument is a social process, mm. right? Analysis is not a social process. It's an interaction of, of us often with the, with the physical world. But if you're going to have a new idea and a, a possibility that you've imagined actually convert into action, typically it's got to be compelling to other people. Um, and, that's, and that's where where being able to think about your audience and think about the people for whom this has to be compelling and being able to work on uh, a way to sell your idea uh, in, in a way that makes it compelling is an important part of, of the innovator's uh, toolbox. It's not a dry, unemotional thing. It's actually, it's actually a thing that requires human emotions uh, to motivate. 
Well, Roger, you know, in, in closing, perhaps one observation, which is that you've encouraged us to put our thinking caps on. You've spoken about the importance of what goes on between the, the ears, but, but one aspect that, that you bring um, is also about heart and passion and about intent and about purpose. And uh, it comes through loud and clear, and I want to thank you for sharing it with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure.